the Chinese had their eyes on Aksai Chin ever since Mao Zedong took power. And their eyes were on Aksai Chin because the Soviets were exploiting that region for uranium ores. Because the Soviets were using that uranium to put together the first nuclear test, which happened north of Aksai Chin, northern parts of JNK as in its entirety, there is a place called Semi Palatanisk. So when Mao came to power in China, he went to what he believed was his ideological guru, the Soviets. And Mao Zedong was encouraged by the Soviets that now that we've done a nuclear test, you should start looking at consolidating your hold on Tibet. Because historically, Tibet had been encroached upon by the Russian Empire. That is briefly mentioned in the book. And the Chinese began to quietly work to a plan. The plan became obvious to Pandit Nehru's team only in the late 1950s. By then, seven, eight years, they had been in Aksai Chin. Whether they knew before or not, I cannot say with certainty. There was an expedition that was left, led by Major, a Captain, later Major General Rajendranath of 11 Gurkhas. His expedition report remains classified. He went there in the mid-50s, reported, I believe, that he saw Chinese presence there. But it was hushed up. So Nehru and Krishnamenon believed they could out-talk anybody into a diplomatic solution. That seems to be the baggage the Foreign Office of India carries even today. But the problem was the Chinese were not going to give in then, not going to give in now. Increasingly, Aksai Chin became the point from where they can get resources from uranium to mineral wealth to water resources that flow into JNK. And water is not pure drinking water we are talking about. Water that can be accumulated as static water which can then, with sand and other chemicals, be transformed into silicon wafers. Hence, the Chinese investment now of $26 billion in five dams in POK on the rivers that come out of the Indus water system. So, therefore, I wrote a piece when the Galwan incident happened in Times of India, and I identified these were Chinese priorities, water, territory, strategic control, mineral resources, uranium, etc. Some general officers who knew me, and not many do I engage with, but called me up to say, you know, fantastic. We never looked at it this way. And this has been given in some detail in the last two chapters of my earlier book, which I co-authored with Iqbal Malhotra, called Kashmir's Untold Story, and where is the China Park nexus coming from? By the time the Aksajin matter hit Nehru and his team on its face, which was in the late 50s when the issue became a matter in parliament. A lot of water had already flown through the Indus and China had built a road connecting north of Aksai Chin, Kashgar to southeast of Aksai Chin in Tibet, Lhasa. So it became a strategic road which is today called Highway G219 and it is to give depth to that road and to provide it protection from artillery shelling that the Chinese have tried to acquire more and more territory from the LSE that has come to be. By the way, the LSE only got the nomenclature in 1993 when Mr. Vajpayee's visit was followed by Narsimha Rao's visit. Before that, as you know, having been in military operations, it was not the, called the LSE, although the line remained more or less the same, varying a bit before the 62 conflict, after the 62 conflict. And in 59-60, Chao and Lai made an offer to Pandit Nehru, you let us keep this and you keep the entire area of Arunachal Pradesh, which was then NIFA. So Pandit Nehru then went again for a zero-sum option that NIFA is already with us. We want all this territory of Aksai Chin back, which is the line even now our diplomats argue 
that we want a solution which is LAC plus, that means parts of Aksai chain. And China wants LAC plus also, that means more parts of Ladakh. So we are not willing to do a swap. We are not willing to agree. And the historical claims, whether it's the Treaty of Chushul of 1842 or thereafter the Treaty of Amritsar 1846, which created the Kingdom of Jammu Kashmir, or thereafter the lines that came to be the Johnson line, the McCartney line, and the Ardagh line. These lines were drawn by the British Empire. And when you have an empire, you can draw what lines you want because the others are not as strong as you. China has the same assumption. Today, they have an empire and they wish to draw the lines. That was drawn a century, century and a half ago. And they said, if you go by those lines, you have to go by our lines now because we are very powerful now. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net.